In the last video, we created the news archive. However, those article teasers linked to no man's land. Well, we're going to fix that now. Now we already know what URL we want the article detail page to live at. See, when we click a read more link in a news archive, we are directed to this URL. Now it consists of the word article followed by the article's ID. We'll use that to identify the article we want to view. The slug is in the URL as well, but that's for CO purposes only. Now we use the article ID to identify articles instead of the slug. And that's because we expect our client to write many news articles over the years. And we don't want the client to constantly get unique slug errors when editing articles. Okay, to make this work, we first have to adjust the routing. So, open up routes.php from the config folder. At the moment, we are routing everything to the page controller. But we need to change our route just a little bit. And I think you're going to like this. We can safely remove this route here. Instead, we'll set the 404 override to page. Now, what does that do? Well, basically, every time a visitor visits a URL that Code Igniter would normally throw a 404 error at, Code Igniter will now load the page controller. I'll show you how it works. Say I put a dump into the page controller, index method. Now you can see exactly when it's loaded. Okay. Now, I'll visit the URL news-archive. Code Igniter tries to locate a controller called news-archive, but it's not there. So it loads the 404 override controller instead, which is page. And we have set up our page controller to query the database for a page with the first segment as a slug. Well, it finds a page with the slug news-archive and it will display it. Now I'll visit the URL test. Again, there is no controller test so the 404 override controller is loaded. Now that controller finds no page with a slug of test because there isn't one in our database. So our controller throws a 404 error. See, it's generated right here. Okay, now I'll create a controller called article. It will have a class of article and it will extend the front end controller. Now I'll also create an index method. And okay, I'll just put in a dump as well to welcome us when we visit it. And now, what would happen if I type in the URL article? Exactly. Code Igniter will look for the article controller and it will find it. Now this is a pretty powerful way to set up CMS routing. There's just one more thing we need to add here. Now let's go back to the news archive and click the first read more link. You see, the second segment in our article URL is 7. Now we don't have a method called 7 in our article controller, so for this particular URL we do have to set up a separate routing rule. So let's just do article num slash any and route that to article index dollar sign one dollar sign two. Okay, let's see what we have now. Yep. That works. Okay, so with that set up, we are ready to code the article controller. Now make sure to load the article model in the constructor first. Okay, and now let's dive into the index method. What are we going to do here? Well, first we fetch the article, and then we'll return a 404 if the article was not found. And then we'll redirect the user if the slug was incorrect, and I'll explain that later. And then we'll set the subview and load the main layout. Good. To fetch the article, we'll first set our where statement for publication date. So, pub date is less than or equal to today. We don't want the user to be able to view an article that was not yet published. And then we'll fetch the article by its ID. And that should give us the article we're looking for. So, let's just do a dump to check what it returns. Well, we're fetching the article, all right. Now, I'll just look for a non-existent ID. And yep, that returns an empty array as expected. Now, we'll assume we have an article, but then if we don't, we'll return a 404. And we'll pass in the URI string, so the 404 URL will show up in our logs. And let's just skip the redirect conditional for now. Now, we'll set the subview to article, and then we'll load the main layout like so. And let's create that article view now. Remember, our layout loads all view files from the template folder. So, let's create that view file there. That's it. And now let's just dump our article within that view file. 
do one more check. This invalid ID now returns a 404, so that's good. And the proper ID displays a dump of the article itself. Super. So, time to code our view. Now, I just created a temporary code snippet to make my life easier. But do feel free to type this by hand if you want to. Now, <laughs> this is our main column and our sidebar column with the regular sidebar inside. Okay, let's create an article tag and inside we need a number two heading and a P tag with a class of pub date. Now, the heading will contain the article title we'll run through our escape method. The pub date paragraph will of course contain the article's pub date also run through our escape method. And finally, let's just echo the article body. Now we don't need to wrap it into a paragraph because TinyMCE already adds that paragraph tag. So, let's see what we've got. Almost good. I think we have some superfluous markup in our view. Ah yes, we can remove the row here. Now let's check that again. Well, that looks good. There's just one thing left to do and that's check the slug. Now here's what's wrong with our current setup. We're not checking for the slug. So in a third segment, we can put pre well, pretty much anything. And that's not good. Because let's say we have this slug in our website. Now Google indexes it. Now our customer changes the slug. So Google indexes that too. Google doesn't know the first URL is invalid because it still exists, you see? And thus, Google will regard this page as duplicate content and we can get penalized for that. So, we need to make provisions to prevent such a disaster. Okay, now let's go inside our article controller and make that happen. How to do this? Well, we know the slug the visitor is requesting. It's in this URI segment 3. And we know the set slug, that is, the slug that's inside our database, because that is in article slug. So let's do a conditional here. If requested slug is not equal to set slug, let's do a redirect. And we'll redirect to article ID set slug. We'll need to set location as the second parameter and 301 as the third. Now this will send a 301 header telling the visitor that this is a permanent redirect. And of course, I'll need to replace article with this data article. So let's just paste that in here, here and here. So let's see if that works. First, we'll visit the proper URL. All good. And now we'll change to another URL. And look at that. We are indeed being redirected. So that works as well. Okay, well, that's all for the article detail page. In the next video, we'll populate the sidebar with the most recent articles and remove some repetitive code. I'll see you then.